We want to thank our Patreons for making trips like this possible. If you're interested in supporting the Out of Spec channel, there is a link in the description below. One disclaimer about this video is we spent much of our time without cell service, so the Teslify data logging that I typically use on the car did not log many of our charging stops. For that reason, I'm going to leave the data out of this video, but if you're watching just to see how much energy is consumed and how long we wait at chargers, we have plenty of other videos in this series that goes through all of the data. In this episode, you join us from Glacier National Park, where we take our Tesla Model 3 performance all the way to the Bonneville Salt Flats. We spend a lot of time camping, and it's more of an adventure, more than just a road trip in this particular episode. We hope you enjoy. Hello and welcome to Glacier National Park. You join us in the spot where we left you off with in last episode because we have an exciting drive and journey. Our car, first off, we had left the peak of this mountain with 15% state of charge. We're gonna see how much we gain going down this road back to the level two charger. Once we're there, we're going to get back to our campground, which is a secret spot on a secret river. It's really, really sweet. Just amazing uh, dispersed camping on uh, national forest land. Then we're gonna go jump in the car and go to Yellowstone and then Grand Teton. So you're gonna join us for some of the beautiful sites in the US. This not being one of them that just went by. <laughs> and we will be off to Three national parks in one episode. Let's go to Yellowstone and the Tetons. We leave in the morning. now back at the level two site the only level two charger in the park including campgrounds because all of the campgrounds are closed for covid and uh, we gained about five percent on the way down the hill we started with 15 percent at the peak peaked at 20 percent then the last stretch we dipped down to 19 driving over here but the dogs i think you guys had a good ride the car is an absolute disaster we have to get it cleaned out when we pack up the tent and everything we'll get it reorganized for them and we will be off to where's next yellowstone yellowstone, yellowstone. check out this power graph we charged it up to 27 percent but 328 miles of range predicted at 25 percent if we continue downhill if we get this uh going uphill portion you know to go down a little bit after we drive a bit then this number will continue to go up which is just so funny You join us back at the campsite just before sunset. It's about 8 p.m. and it's time to start thinking about dinner. Alyssa is having fun with the dogs in the river, so I figured I will make some food. And let me show you all of the things that we have to make. 
So to cook, like you saw in last episode, we use our Coleman grill. We have propane. This thing is great. And then thanks to Evanex, they make electric vehicle accessories. They sent us this front trunk cooler. And this essentially has been great just for storage, but we also in the beginning of the trip used it to cool things. So we have mac and cheese. We have Chef Boyardee nastiness. I don't know what we have, but I'm going to figure something out to make here. So unfortunately, after first glance, it looks like all of these bottles have started to rust and some have even started to purge and leak. So we will not be eating any of that garbage nastiness because it doesn't look good anyway. So we will eat our freeze dried food. That's right, we brought uh, freeze dried food that is good until 2050. And honestly, it's delicious, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll have some of that. And when I said I was going to be making dinner, I of course meant Alyssa will be making dinner. Thank you very much for cooking. Mm -hmm. I'm not the best at it. But the stove and everything's looking good and working out well for you? Yeah, it gets almost too hot. Well, you can always turn it down. Yeah, I know, but I had I was toggling with it. That's so why I had this because it kept overflowing. Mm. I turn it all the way down, but it's still, it's still bubbling. We've got lasagna and meat sauce, and I added some extra noodles because Kyle's obsessed with meat sauce, and I always got to make extra noodles for him. That's right. And dogs, if you could stop trying to eat from my food, that would be great. Blue, chill out, whatever you're doing. Ellie, you're always good. You're a sweet girl. So we had a great dinner thanks to Alyssa and we've been running through our options in terms of what to do next. Um, we are on no huge time limit, but the downside of being here is we are not connected. There is no internet connection, which sounds great. And we did have a great couple days without internet. Uh, but honestly, it's, um, you know, I work remote, I sort of need to be tethered to online. That's one of the reasons we're able to do this trip is I can work from anywhere, but I still need to be connected to the outside world. We are going to pack everything into the car, the tent, the dogs, everything. We're going to go back into the park, up to Lake McDonald, back into the level two we've been using and get enough charge to make it to the Missoula supercharger, probably three to four hours worth of charge. While we're doing that, Alyssa and I are going to sleep and um, we'll see how well that works. We're not able to lay down in the back because that's where the dogs will be. They'll sleep just fine. Uh, so we're going to uh, try and sleep while the car charges. And then once we have enough juice to get to the supercharger network, we'll be ready to go and figure it out from there. So let's load up the car, pack everything up and go. <laughs> Alyssa is washing her feet, which is quite an interesting thing. Uh, I guess that's good hygiene, Alyssa. Good job. Thank you. And we are charged up only to 16% and we have a trek to get to the charger. So this is the way the car wants us to go, but we know a secret little fire road that we can cut right through here that will save us some energy. So we're going to cut through here, drive up to the charger, take a nap, and then it'll be a new day for a new adventure. And we have arrived back at the charger at 9%. Let's get plugged in. Yeah, it's pretty dark here, which is cool and nice. Maybe we can see some stars. You guys can't even see what I'm pointing the camera at. And I can't see what I'm doing here. So let me get this thing charging. We're going to take a nap. Here we go. Port is opening. And I'll check in with you all when we wake up in the morning. Let's get some sleep.
Well, again, a big thank you to FNX Ellie. You look so out of it. We have these awesome sunshades that we can put around the entire car. One of the reasons we're doing this is so we can test these things out. We also have them for the roof and the trunk. We just decided not to put them in uh, because we have the roof box up there. So it won't be a huge deal. And I'm not really worried about anyone coming around to the car, but this will give us a nice added bit of privacy and sun protection. And good morning. It is 5.59 a.m., just about 6 o'clock. We're charged up to 80%, which is more than enough to get to the supercharger in Missoula. I slept great. Uh, how about you? Not so good? Well, actually, that worked out pretty well. I say we uh, get up, get going, and we'll be on our way to Yellowstone. <music> in here at about 11 percent we are charged up to 90 i fell back asleep so that's why we didn't have much content at this stop i don't even know how long we've been charged up to 90 percent for but what do you say we go to starbucks which is right there right there Good morning and welcome to Missoula, Montana. We're taking the dogs for a walk just to get them out of the car. We ordered breakfast at a really cool spot downtown. Guys, get off their lawn, come on. Blue's pooping on someone's lawn. I'm pooping again. Ellie's pooping again. <laughs> this is what it's like when you have dogs, they just poop everywhere. Anyway, Missoula is a beautiful town. The weather's perfect, a little chilly, exactly what we've needed and um, yeah, I'm definitely woken up. That Starbucks woke me right up, which is what I needed. We have uh, breakfast waiting at the shop up here, and we will be enjoying that as the car software updates to the next update. Welcome. 
welcome back to Butte, Montana. We're at 17%. We're going to West Yellowstone. We'll charge this thing up to 56%, no, 50 to 60% and get over that way. Well, I have to say I'm very happy we updated the car. We are on software version uh, 2020.24.6.9. And I had a uh, uh, sneaking suspicion that they had unlocked the charging profiles even more. And so far that seems to be the case. It used to taper at 34% under 130 kilowatt and we're at 37% still maxing this out close to 150. So we'll see uh, how well it does, but I'm very pleased with the new software charging profile so far. If anything, it means it's just gonna heat up that charging handle more and you'll need to wrap it with a wet rag so that it can sustain those peak speeds longer. We are charged up to 70% nearly. Uh, the charging profile was definitely better, not revolutionary, but incremental improvements to unlock capacity. This wet rag here is just to keep the charge handle from overheating. So now to the touch, it's warm, but not blazing hot because this is what will limit charge speed early if it gets too hot. So keeping it nice and cool in the hot summer will continue charging faster for longer. Or of course, you can let this get hot, thermal throttle, move stalls to another supercharger, and then plug back in on a cool handle, does the same, but this at least eliminates you having to move. Let's head off to Yellowstone. We are at the Grizzly and Wolf Discovery Center, which also happens to be where the supercharger is, which is very convenient. Although it says no dogs that way. So I don't know if the dogs will get to go out here. Let's hope so. We'll get this thing charging up. We're at 4%. We're gonna do a 100% charge like we did before we went to um, Glacier. We don't know charging options in Yellowstone. They're pretty infrequent. And we already know our campsite tonight in the Grand Teton National Park or forest, not sure which, uh, doesn't have charging. So we're gonna need all the juice we can get here. I think we've realized why no dogs are allowed and it's because these are probably the enclosures behind us. Um, we're gonna go inside and explore, right? And then we'll go out and walk the dogs after we've done charging. We're using once again, the Evanex heat shields and because the front ones that we have are up in the box, we're just using sheets, but this is so blue doesn't start barking at everyone that walks by because he will freak out. Well, they sell them in 30 minute blocks to go on a tour to see the wolves and bears. And they have 11 week old wolf puppies that we really want to see, um, but they're booked out to like 
way late this evening. And we're not gonna hang out here for two hours waiting. Well, we just got some awesome food from that Mexican restaurant bus thing is pretty cool. We're charged up to 91%, but like I said, we're going all the way. So a quick half episode of Netflix and we'll be charged up. Mm -hmm. And we finished up our food, charged up all the way. Time to head into the park. Welcome to Yellowstone. It yeah, it smells like sulfur. And we found our first spring. A sulfur spring, I guess. That's pretty wild. It almost sounds like there's a smoke machine in there pushing all this stuff out, but I guess it's natural. It looks really hot. Pretty cool. minutes through Yellowstone and haven't really seen anything. I guess we were spoiled coming from Glacier coming to here. I don't want to say we're disappointed, but everyone's sleeping if that doesn't say anything. So it's just trees on this road and lots of RVs. <laughs> we haven't seen anything interesting yet other than that one uh, uh, geyser, which was pretty cool. That was awesome. But you know, we're still trying to figure out what makes this this place special, I guess. All right, we got Miss Nature Spotter over here. What are they? Bison. She's been trying to find a bear, but those are some bison out there. Nice binocular skills. Check out this old bagu. I bet it is a Winnebago. This thing's still kicking and rocking and looking honestly like it's in great shape. Gotta love it. It is a Winnebago. I love the wedges on these. How would you guys like to see one of these converted into electric and then to have a racing series of old converted Winnebago buses? Thumbs up if you'd like to see that. I would. So what you guys just saw behind me, there's a buffalo. He came walking all the way up from down there and we all had to run in the opposite direction because it's a one way. And um, so yeah, um, I don't think a lot of these people know that, that buffalo can jump or bison can jump. So I'm getting away. all through 
through Yellowstone, we saw Old Faithful erupt, which that was really cool. That went really freaking high. Yeah. I had no idea that it, like, so every hour and a half, every 90 minutes, it does that, like, clockwork. Isn't that the craziest thing? Yeah. Well, it's like 60 minutes, but then it's an extra 30 minute buffer. Oh, I see. Yeah. Anyway, pretty awesome. And uh, now I think we've kind of seen everything we were hoping to see in Yellowstone. It's 8.17 p.m. The sun's about to set. So we're on our way to the Grand Tetons, which is just south of Yellowstone, where her sister has already grabbed us a campground. There is no charging, but we have plenty of charge in the car. So we are all good. can't really see much but the dogs are chilling in dog mode right here and um, we're just unloading the car because our campsite is like way up I don't know about 200 yards into the woods there's no power sites here however they are letting me plug into a 110 outlet at the main lodge which is super cool and uh, we'll just let this thing charge up on 110 volt, which is great. It's at 50%. It's not like we need it, but hey, we'll take the juice if we can get it. So we're just, we're blowing up the air mattress down here by the car and it looks like a Model X is pulling in. And uh, that's pretty interesting, but maybe we can both charge on the 110 outlet. But for now, because we can't get the car all the way to our campsite, that's where that fire is. We're gonna blow up our air mattress here off of the power from the car. We arrived to our campground, quickly setting up our tent, enjoying the fire, and getting right to bed. In the morning, we released the dogs on Michaela and David, Alyssa's sister and her boyfriend. Blue, of course, found an exit and ran away from the tent. And then the three of them prepped to go on a hike for the day. Here's Alyssa explaining how each of them had bear spray and how it's more powerful than pepper spray. Of course, I messed up the audio on this clip. I decided to stay back, get a little work done, and do some exploring by car with the dogs because the dogs are not allowed on most hikes. So today it's just me and the dogs. I think it's a Wednesday or, or no, today's Tuesday. I think we might be here till Friday. It's just such a great spot, good location. Um, we have no electrical, no water, nothing here like this. So it's uh, pure camping in the middle of the woods, which is fun. Um, although I do need to shower, it's been days. Like I feel disgusting, I cannot describe. I don't even want you to know how disgusting I feel, but just, ugh. So I bought this portable shower, links in the description. I then filled it up as far as I could in the sink in the nasty bathroom, finished off the rest with water bottles. I'll have to get more. And because I am me, I don't want to take a cold shower. So my plan <laughs> is to take two water bottles worth of uh, normal room temperature water, although it's still a little chilly out, boil it in the kettle and then pour it into my shower. Um, the only negative thing I could see about this is maybe some plastics will burnt up, but honestly, I don't care. I just don't want to take a cold shower. So um, that's my plan for the morning. And that's how I plan to take a warm shower in the middle of the woods. Pretty cool. Well, after that, th honestly, that was incredible. One of the best feelings, finally, being clean. Um, that boiling of the water worked just a little bit. Next time, hotter and more water to go in that's hot, but otherwise, it really wasn't unbearable. I'm clean, I feel great. I think the dogs and I are gonna go have a good day exploring by car and by prepping for dinner and I have so much work to do. Gotta edit so many videos for you guys and other stuff. So I'll be here just cranking it out. So this is our campsite here. And whenever you leave, you need to make sure that you put all of your smelly foods, including dog food, which I will have to pack up, into this box that is like a bear storage box. And the thing is that we learned, because you know I'm not outdoorsy at all, <laughs> but getting there is that, um, if a bear comes into the campground too much and starts looking for food, and if they get food from your campground, they'll have to kill the bear. So essentially by putting the food away, we are saving the bear's life. And apparently there has been one coming into this campground that's getting a little, little too friendly. 
So we are, uh, we're putting everything away, doing our part to keep this place nice, clean, and away from bear and us alive. Especially you, Ellie. Because no bear is going to be afraid of you. All right, I'm taking these two for a ride into town. Or right now they're taking me a ride to the car. Stop pulling so hard. So let's figure out where we want to go. We're just going to have the fans blasting. We want to go here to the Jackson, Wyoming Supercharger. Oh, it's getting loud. Let's turn this down. And in Jackson, there's, you know, obviously a cool town. I don't think it's more than an hour away or so. We'll go there, charge up and come back. We charged up about 10 or 12% last night. Actually, we're at 49, 13%, and I only had it set to eight amps. So pretty good. just had to stop because look at that view. Does it not get any better? Plus a cool plane going right overhead. That has got to be one of the prettiest things ever. What a cool sight. So we're in downtown Jackson Hole, great town. There's a Starbucks there and the supercharger's not nearby, but there's a free Chatamo station right over here. If you're wondering where I find the plugs, always on plug share. So we're gonna plug in at the Chatamo, get Starbucks, and then we'll run to the supercharger, which will charge faster. Also, we just get to see more charging spots. And now you join us in a parking garage for Wyoming's second install of a public DC fast charger. We saw North Dakota's first, this is Wyoming's second, and it's only 430 miles away from Cheyenne, which is its first. You can see we have the Chatamo adapter charging right now. The car is taking just about 30 kilowatt. This will either ramp up, but as pack voltage increases, uh, we will get more power out of it. But hey, free charging. Let's see, lots of good stuff here. Don't need to bug with any of that. Love these chargers. They're really nice units. And um, yeah, they're not crazy fast, but 50 kilowatt for free, why not? We have the dogs in the car, sitting on dog mode. I'm going to go get some Starbucks and maybe some supplies for tonight around here. If not, definitely at the supercharger. We are back at the charger after Starbucks being closed. And for some reason, it's only doing 30 kilowatt, but that's okay. We're going to unplug and go to the real supercharger, the Tesla one. That's always wicked fast. Let's head over. Well, as we're just exiting, a charge point electrician came up and was like, hey, I'm just about to start working on the unit. I'm like, oh, what's wrong with it? He said, well, one of the modules needs to be replaced. It's not outputting full power. I'm like, well, that explains why we were only getting 30 kilowatts. He's like, ha, huh, that's funny. Only three people have charged on this unit in total. So um, cool to see ChargePoint doing it. They, he drove all the way out from middle of Montana to here to Jackson, Wyoming. And uh, I just thought that was so cool that they're committed to keeping their network up and running. So props to ChargePoint for that. He's running to Idaho Falls, I guess, afterwards to do another one and uh, just cool to see sites being maintained. That's really important to make sure EVs can charge easily. We just finished up meeting some cool viewers of out of spec again, just randomly ran into them here in Jackson, Wyoming. We did all of our grocery shopping. I have water supplies up in the roof. Blue, you've been on patrol, keeping the car nice and safe. Good job, get in the back. And we're back to our campsite. Although I do want to get a really long extension cord, so maybe we'll find a Lowe's or Home Depot. It's now 2.28 p.m. We've run all of our errands in town. We're at charged up to 95%. Time to head back should be about an hour back to the campground, be there at three o'clock, and then we can get started on some work. But hey, we're on our own schedule. So now I'm going to show you my power setup at the camp. So I have this awesome pure sine wave inverter. It's good for electronics to have a pure sine wave, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, closing the door on that extension cord that I don't really care about. So we have one extension cord going up the path. I think this one's a 50 footer. 
Then we have a 25 footer, an orange one, that it's hooked into right there. I don't know if you can see the hook point. Then I run that up the path. We cross over here. We're the only ones to use this path, so it's not a huge deal, but still wanted it to look kind of nice. And I have that running up the edge here, and I have a little bit extra because we're going to run it into the tent to fix our air mattress that had a leak in it. So we're able to blow it up in the tent. And then from here, of course, I have my power strip powering all of our electronics, the drone stuff, phones, everything. Pretty sweet. Blue, don't play with that. Nope, not for you, buddy. Blue, leave it. Good boy. Well, you just arrived. I haven't said anything to you yet. How are you doing? Great. Did you run into any bear on your hike? No. Did you run into anything interesting? No. Well, I'm glad I didn't go. Well, there's a lot of mushrooms. That's yeah, I hate mushrooms. That was a really pretty view. Though. Oh, it was a good view. Yeah. I saw some on the way into town as well. It's just fun to get out and get some exercise. <laughs> hey, guys. We had a great adventure, though. Really good adventure, the dogs and I. <laughs> making us for dinner some spaghetti got some noodles got some pasta or some red sauce this is my meat. favorite meal isn't it yeah it is do you think these guys look alike do you even know which one's Alyssa comment down who's below. older who's younger yeah leave your comments down below
morning. It is that day where we leave our campsite. I think we were here four nights in the Grand Teton National Park. Amazing stuff. I had a great time. This was my workstation. We got to explore. Alyssa went on the lake. The dogs had an absolute blast. This was really the longest we have stopped on this trip so far, and it was much needed. We got to spend some great time with Alyssa's sister and her boyfriend, which you saw in the video. We really just absolutely enjoyed it. But today is the day where we leave. And honestly, we don't know where we're going next. <laughs> so I think what we're going to do probably is jump in the car and then figure it out. But for now, I'm going to go... Um, use the restroom, pack all this up, get everything in the car, and hopefully we'll hit the road by about 10.30 in the morning, and we'll pick where we're going next. That's sort of just the crazy thing. We are thinking about potentially going to California, maybe Washington, maybe Oregon, maybe both, all three. We don't know yet. We'll figure it out. Time to get this day going. Just getting all packed up here, got the tent up, got the uh, tarp up. We, it rained a lot, so everything was just covered in water and mud. Had to shake it all off. Uh, where do you want to head to next, Alyssa? A hotel. a hotel? Yeah, we might do a hotel tonight just because showers are badly needed, and so are like laundry and dog baths. Yeah, we got to find a very dog-friendly hotel because these guys need to get a little bit cleaned up after spending the last week in the mud. And the car is starting to take shape. The Yakima Grand Tour 16 just holds so much stuff. It's pretty incredible, especially for how efficient it is. I mean, I've been super impressed with this box. Like I said, they sent this to us for free, but it's not sponsored. They probably won't watch the videos. I really mean it. This thing's a great box. Uh, these Martian MW03 wheels looking great, performing very well and are extremely dirty because we've been driving this car properly and exploring around here in some relatively deep mud. So I don't know how we're going to close that trunk. Might need to rearrange, but we're pretty much ready to go. So we have 57% state of charge. We really don't know where we're going to go. Um, Alyssa's doing something here. What are you doing? I'm pushing in the shield. Oh. Uh, getting the sunshades up for the dogs. And I think what we'll do is we'll run into Jackson because they have a Starbucks and charge up the supercharger, which we've been to twice since we're here, since we've been driving around quite a bit. Really cool spot at a grocery store. And then from there, we'll kind of figure out where we want to go. We'll talk about it on the way over. So for now, let's head to the Jackson, Wyoming supercharger. So we're here charging up in Jackson, Wyoming. We have finally a plan. We are going to Park City, Utah, which is just east of Salt Lake. Really cool town. We've both been there. We both love it. Cool ski town. And um, we're going to drive directly south of Jackson to the Evanston, Wyoming supercharger, top up, and then we'll be in, in uh, Park City. Really easy trip. I think maybe even tomorrow we'll hang out, explore some of the canyons, the awesome driving roads around Utah and then we are going to go to the salt flats. So, sounds good to me. We all could use a shower and a nice deep clean, and this supercharger is pretty dang full here, so we should get out because it shows a 19% arrival in Evanston. Yeah, we do. Um, it's from Lovro Pirkel. I don't know how to pronounce what it. What a crazy name. First off, all caps, just so you guys know, but this is how we read it. 
Don't encourage people to put wet rags into supercharger handles. Waters can get into the charge port, and then the current from the charger will jump into the wet rag, and then you'll go and unplug the car, and the hard voltage of the wet rag kills you. Do not do that for your own safety. Yeah, people always telling us how to be safe. This guy thinks putting a wet rag on the supercharger handle is gonna make us explode. Honey, it rains. at this really cute drive-in restaurant. It's a lot like Sonic, but actually probably is gonna taste really, really good. I'm super excited. Um, got a lot of really fattening food and gonna feel like crap after, but we got a two hour drive so I can sleep it off, right Blue? Well, the th way this works is you kind of just pull up in your car, a waitress comes to your window, you order, and then they bring food to your car. Yeah. And uh, like I don't Sonic. think that's, yeah, like Sonic, but people in other countries don't have Sonic. No. If you live don't. outside of the U.S. and have something like this, comment down below, because those are pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Great service. Well, there's a whole bunch of waitresses around, but they just brought us our food. <laughs> I asked for five ketchup. I thought they are going to be the little packages, but there are so much ketchup. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> All right, let's head off to Park City. Yum. officer somewhere checking someone's speed instead of just leaving the radar detector on and now the question is where is he and it was you know the nice thing about this detector is it's directional it'll show you front back or on the sides and he could be in that Jeep although it's unlikely that that's a police officer's vehicle um, my guess is he was way up there this can do some serious range especially out here in the flatlands and uh, it's just a little trick that police officers use uh, so that if you have a radar detector, you don't slow down ahead of time. But if you use your technology properly, you're good. Now, uh, just because I know someone will comment, if you're the only one going down the road and you get instant on, that's not gonna help you. The only thing that's gonna do is tell you to take out your license and registration. But if they instant on the car in front of you, we can get that that uh, radar waves that come back and, and basically the fragments that hit our car if we pick it up and slow down before they get our speed then we're good and yes it's totally legal except for hawaii and virginia i believe 
and we are just plugged in in Evanston, Wyoming. Pretty rural location at a nice Hampton Inn though. Uh, let's take a look at our charging speeds and see if I can find a towel to put on that charging handle. So we have our wet rag on our supercharger handle to hopefully keep the temperatures down as we rip max speed, especially down low state of charge. I think we plugged in at 4% or 3%. Anyway, we're heading off to Park City. Now we can easily get to Park City with just 10 minutes more, but our hotel tonight does not have any chargers and there's no supercharger in Park City itself. Over here, there are two Chatamo stations, but that's out of the way. So what I think I wanna do is at least give us enough juice to get to Park City drive around a little bit and then get to one of the Chatamos in case we decide to go have dinner in Salt Lake, which is over here. And then um, that's sort of the plan. So we'll charge up till we have, I don't know, maybe we're at 80%, 90% to uh, state of charge, which is way more than we need, but enough to give us some driving around range in Park City. We are now charged up to 73%. Uh, we had a fairly good charging session. Didn't need to switch stalls because of the rag on the charging handle. However, it did start to taper just below 45%, probably a hair earlier than when it would have, but still uh, way better than if we didn't use the wet rag on the charging handle. With that said, I think we have plenty of buffer, 53% to get to Park City. That's plenty to let us get into Salt Lake, drive around and come back or we can even charge at the supercharger in salt lake so i think we unplug check into our hotel drop the dogs off get settled and then figure out what we're going to do tonight just an interesting observation we were in jackson wyoming then we went you know to get to our supercharger in evanston wyoming we went from wyoming to idaho back to wyoming into utah back to Wyoming and now we're back into Utah. <laughs> the roads just kind of zigzag through the states. And we have checked into our hotel of Best Western in Park City. Actually, I thought it was in like downtown Park City. We're outside of Park City, but that works out perfectly because there happens to be a Chatamo in like the same parking lot. It's a free Chatamo. Uh, so we did not need to overcharge at the last supercharger, but that's okay. We'll figure that one out in a little bit and um, dogs are happy. They're super dog friendly here. They're like, go let your dogs have fun in the room. This is a specific dog friendly room. Honestly, you wouldn't know it. Everything looks fresh and brand new. So we're gonna relax, get all of our laundry done. They have a pool here, and then we're gonna go and just have a blast for the night and just relax. Camping, you know, for basically a week straight, you can imagine that we just feel gross. Even though I have a mobile shower, it's just not the same as taking a hot, real shower. We're gonna refresh, reset, and get ready for more camping here in Park City. And so here we're just across the street from our hotel. We just ripped up some amazing canyon roads around Park City. I mean, track mode, full send. You could feel the weight because we have the Yakima box totally loaded up. The car was a little roly-poly, but that just made it fun. So we're gonna chat -mo this up at these new uh, chargers. And we're, I don't think they're networked. There is a card reader and it says it's Chargion. I've never heard of them. We're just gonna click chat -mo. At least on plug share, someone said they were free. So we'll see if that's actually the case. These are probably the 100 amp unit so we'll probably only get 35 to 40 kilowatt max 41 kilowatt as the pack voltage increases but um yeah i would say it's free because now it's doing its little handshake basically the charger and the pack need to match the voltage level so it can dump the current in like it's doing here uh let's see we're at 100 amps there 105 it's 125 amp or 120 amp unit uh uh chatamo which is great normally these are only 100 amp so that's good news. And uh, the car's taking in 35 kilowatt, which is fine because pack voltage is relatively low. As we get up to 50, 60, 70%, that number will increase to close to 50 kilowatt. Um, so free Chatamos, no complaints. Our hotel's literally right here. We're gonna grab dinner. By the time we're done with dinner in about an hour, this thing will be up to 90%, ready for some more rippage in the morning. And good morning from beautiful 
Park City, Utah. We've had a blast here. We reset last night, did all of our laundry, slept in, great comfortable bed. Little SpongeBob came on this morning. Who doesn't love SpongeBob? <laughs> anyway, I found uh, 110 outlets in the parking lot here. We only charged up at that Chatamo a little bit. We honestly just got tired and we're like, let's just get laundry done and go to bed. So uh, we added 13 kilowatt hours, just plugged into a wall outlet here for free. Each post has uh, 110 outlets in this parking lot. They said it was totally fine to plug in the car. So that's perfect. Um, we're at 63%. We have more than enough to get around town. I think we'll do a little bit more exploring around Park City now with the dogs. We won't rip it as hard because last night we went out in track mode, ripping around, amazing, amazing roads, saw a few other car enthusiasts and just had an absolute blast. So we're charged up to 63%, uh, as I said. We'll drive around here, go to Salt Lake, and it's all downhill into Salt Lake. So we can pretty much drive around until it's almost dead up here in Park City and still make it to the supercharger. Not sure how long we'll be gone for, but Starbucks is definitely in order. Well, we got our Starbucks. You're doing your makeup. Oh yeah, had uh, some viewers of the channel run into me into the grocery store. That, it's just so funny. Cool running into you guys. Gosh, and uh, we, we see people everywhere now. It's pretty funny. Blue, what are you doing? I just want to be in the video. Uh, let's head over to the flats. What do you say? Or do you want to stop in Salt Lake first? There's nothing in Salt Lake. Yeah, there's nothing in Salt Lake, aside from a pretty cool church, but I've seen it. And we my can't go in anyway, because we're not Mormon. Yeah, my brother lives right down the street from it, so I've seen it a lot. So. Yeah, and we've already seen your brother in my knot. Yeah. All right, let's go to the Salt Flats, and then there's also a little dry lake bed that I was thinking maybe we could hit afterwards. Yeah. Yep maybe next episode what is the new news of starbucks inside of grocery stores oh dreadful we're gonna need more patreons after this well they charge you because i get my starbucks drink which is a trenta strawberry acai with light ice no water no inclusions the no water and light ice means you have to use more base, which I've been having this drink for five, six years, almost every day. Not, I, I save the comments. So bad. Anyway, um, now they charge you extra for the base, which yesterday was the first time I had seen this and they charged me a dollar fifty extra. And I was like, that seems silly. This store only charged me 50 cents extra. I guess that kind of makes sense, but a dollar fifty extra seemed a little bit like a ripoff. It, it was like a seven dollar drink. Well, the fact that you pay five dollars for a drink every yeah, day. Yeah, I is pay kind close of... to six dollars every day for it, um, but it keeps me going. It keeps me in a good mood. Without it, I'm not in a good mood. It's true. So here's the driving plan over to the Bonneville Salt Flats. There's a supercharger just over the border in West. Sorry, Nevada. Why was I going to say West Virginia? Probably because I saw the V. Anyway, um, we're going to go there, top up, so we have enough juice to drive up and down the flats. Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll stop at this supercharger on the way in Thule, Utah. And um, I think maybe we'll take some of the back roads over that way because this is kind of the boring highway. This would be a lot more fun. These are some of the roads we were ripping on yesterday. Just amazing canyon roads. So I think we'll go down this way, through the canyons, maybe through downtown and over and west. Let's do it. guys we're driving through some neighborhoods and we found our next home check that out so you'll see us moving to park city in just a couple of days you know just uh please support us in our patreon <laughs> that is so sick such a cool neighborhood up here
the Tuolili, how do you say that? Tuolili Utah Supercharger. Let's get this thing juicing up at the 150 kilowatt chargers. We're at very high state of charge, 46% ish. So we do not require a rag over the handle because we're really not going to be pulling that much current. Let's uh, take a look as this thing ramps up here. I think, you know, we'll definitely be able to make it to the um, Wendover supercharger, West Wendover. And, um, you know, it wants us here, right, just for about 10, 15 minutes. And then we might even stay a little longer because you can pretty much just drive flat out down this highway as quickly as you want and just see for miles. Look, there's literally no turns for probably 80, 90 miles, just completely straight road across the flats. And we plan to camp somewhere around here, around Bonneville. So, right, those are pretty cool. This will be a cool day. Well, we sort of got locked into Netflix and we are more than good to go. So let's go burn up some juice along this highway to West Wendover, Nevada. Join us on the moon. Welcome to the Bonneville Salt Flats, one of the most historic places for top speed racing. I've been here a few times. It's one of the coolest things. 40 square miles pretty much of salt that you can just rip on as much as you want. And we definitely plan to do that. We came by here just to make sure the surface was good. It is. We're going to maybe take the roof box off and try and max out the car. You'll have to wait for next episode for that. So for now, you, we leave you at the salt flats. We're gonna go charge up, have some fun on here for the rest of the day. And for all of those saying that this will destroy the car, yes, it will. Good thing I don't keep cars very long. Salt is rough on vehicles. Don't bring cars you like out here, even though it's mostly aluminum. There is a lot of steel in the Model 3 as well. Alyssa's never been here. What do you think? Pretty sick, that's right. We'll see you on next episode. Thank you for liking, subscribing. We really appreciate your viewership. Follow us on Glimpse, link below, or description below. And um, yeah, we'll see you on the next one.